Disney, let's take a look at that stock. It's under pressure today after pivotal research. Downgraded shares to sell. They maintain the price target to 93 bucks. They say the stock rise recently is unwarranted. We've made it our call of the day. We want to bring in Pete Najarian from Minneapolis, who is with us as well. Uh, Pete, you used to own this one, and I don't think you do anymore. And I'm wondering what you make of this call to get out of Disney now. Actually, I do own it, Scott. I bought it back uh, about the middle of May. I'd been out of it for a little while, but I bought back in. You know what I really like, and the reason, one of the main reasons that I got back into this stock is when you look at the fundamental story, when they actually did their, you know, report their earnings, one of the areas that we've all been talking about has been ESPN, right? I mean, that's been something that we've all had concerns about for a very long time now. Well, I think that when you really look, and this is what really was the trigger for me, the catalyst was, you know, the gambling. The sports gambling, I actually think that will be great for somebody like ESPN. And that's been one of the areas where we all point to it. Studios have been strong. Parks have been great. You look at the growth in terms of the earnings and the revenue growth that they're seeing right now across all of those areas. But we all point back towards ESPN because, obviously, that was the crown jewel. I think the 93 price target says it all. I think this is an analyst who's been holding or on a sell for quite some long period of time now. And I think that price target should be higher than it is right now you can't, because actually I think there's going to be some bonuses going forward. I get you, but you, you can't necessarily assume that Disney's going to make back the number of subs that it has lost over the last so, many, so many quarters just because right. gambling is going to be legalized. No, I, and I didn't say that. But what I did say well, you're is, painting I think a scenario in which, but well, you are painting a scenario in which ESPN, mm -hmm. ESPN gets a, a boost, and thus that's the reason why yes. this stock is going to go higher. Well, I think that ESPN gets a Band-Aid. And, and looking forward, Scott, I mean, there are several different other areas where Iger has obviously been focused on. We talk about BAM Tech and that acquisition. They have been late, and I've, I've been very critical of this, and this is part of the reason that I was out of Disney for a while. They've been so late when it comes to the streaming world. That's something that I think they still need to address. They need to get much more aggressive. They are. They're trying to move forward with that. But this is a Band-Aid, I think, at least, and maybe even a little bit better than that, for ESPN. If that's the case, look at the growth that you're getting, Scott. When you look at the parks and you look at the revenue growth there, or you look at the studios, the revenue growth, 21% this last quarter they were up. So there is growth at Disney. I still think when you look at an evaluation, this is 115, maybe 120. I know there's a couple of analysts out there with 130, 135 targets. That seems a little bit high for me, but 115, 120, that doesn't seem that far out of, the, out of reach for Disney. All right, so Jimmy, so you're in sort of this, you know, bidding war with yeah. our parent uh, for these Fox assets. The analyst over at Pivotal says, the stock's recent run-up fails to reflect that a higher price paid for Fox Entertainment, uh, the assets, would reduce the value of Disney to its shareholders. Yeah, I, I, say, agree. I, I, I agree. Trying to one-up is not necessarily the best move Well, Disney's in, in kind of, a, you know, worst of both worlds here as far as this acquisition of Fox goes. Either they pay too much in this bidding war, which is what the end outcome is probably going to be. Somebody pays too much. Or they let it go and they lose some extra content that they really could use. Pete, you might be right about sports betting, but I think I'm right that all of these companies in this space need to beef up their, their content. And it's not just broadcast, it's on the studio side. I mean, you pointed that out. I want to point out to you that the latest edition of the Star Wars franchise, the, the Solo movie, really hasn't done well. It's shown some chinks in the armor. Now I'll say something totally inflammatory, but I am getting a little fatigued with the Marvel Universe. I can't be the only one in the world who is getting fatigued with that. After a certain point in time, these franchises lose their, their oomph. What do, you, what do you think, Pete? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I look at Black Panther. I look at some of the other areas where they've had some incredible success, though. And I do agree with you. I mean, the, the Star Wars franchise, is it over? I don't think it's over. But they've got to actually produce better than they clearly did this last you know, that they're this last launch, that's been a problem. There's no doubt about it. I mean, though that is disappointing in terms of some of the numbers. But overall, when you look at the acquisitions that Iger has made over time and what they've been able to do going forward, I still think you see a lot of growth there, Jimmy. And I understand the ESPN thing. You know, I, I, I understand what Scott's saying. I don't say that they get back all of these folks that have left over the last period of time. But take a look at this downgrade today. You're looking at a market down 17200 whatever you want to call. 
call it. Stock's up 10% in a month, and this downgrade pushes down the stock 1.4%. I think that says a lot about the fact that people aren't really buying into this downgrade well, today. Well, because obviously, look, I mean, the, the, the downgrade's an opinion. you gotta, you got to see where... The, the whole thing for the Fox assets co comes out. No one's going to yes. place all of their chips on the, on the table as a, from a stock standpoint until, until we figure out what's going to happen. No, you're right about that, Scott, and I, 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 do, I do agree with you, but it, it is kind of that lose-lose is what this analyst is putting out there, and I would actually say, okay, Let's say they do start to get into a bidding war. If they overpay, yes, that's going to be a problem. If they lose the assets, then I don't think that's as big a problem. We talked about the synergies, but should they overpay? I say no. And I think Iger's a smart enough negotiator that he likely won't overpay. Maybe they go back and forth a little bit, but I don't expect him to overpay for the assets. Look at what those acquisitions have done in the past when you look at Marvel and some of the rest of them, where he paid and what some of the numbers look like now. It's absolutely astronomical. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.